One cannot damage history, because history cannot be changed. Past, present, future. It's all written in stone, my dear. There is no hope. There is only the Shredder. Remember, the Shredder is always watching. Shalom, ladies and jellyfish. Welcome back to Ask Ears Videos. Today is a long-awaited video comparing two shows that are long overdue for reviews on this channel. And I got more videos coming on both individual shows, so be sure to subscribe for that. But today, rather than compare TMNT 2003 and Teen Titans as shows, I'm going to be comparing two episodes from each show with almost identical plots. Those episodes are Same As It Never Was from TMNT and How Long Is Forever from Teen Titans. And I'm really surprised these episodes haven't been compared before because not only are they incredibly similar, they are also both some of the best episodes of their own shows, with many TMNT fans regarding Same As It Never Was as the darkest and most emotional episode of the show, and many Teen Titans fans regarding How Long Is Forever as one of the deepest and most complex plots to come out of Teen Titans. But if I'm going to be comparing these, I feel like I'm missing something. Well, duh, you need a dude to bounce off him and debate the goods and bads of both these episodes. That's true. I do have a personal bias towards the TMNT episodes since it's obviously better. Whoa, 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 hold on. What do you mean, obviously better? The Titans episode is obviously superior to your 4-3 Ninja Turtles ripoff. Oh, it's on. Let's get into the comparison of How Long Is Forever versus Same As It Never Was. And along the way, not really find out which show is better, but simply how they both tackle this particular plot and their methods of storytelling. Also, to kick your butt and prove my episode is better, <laughs> let's begin. Before we get into these episodes, I think it's fair to point out that these episodes aired 13 months apart from each other. And the Teen Titans one actually came first. I told you yours was a ripoff. Yeah, honestly, I was surprised too. I thought the TMNT one came first, but I mean, it fit well in the show's arc, so it doesn't really feel like a ripoff. Maybe there was some slight influence from the Teen Titans episode, especially in regards to its mood and theme. But I doubt it was outright rehashed from there, especially because this dark kind of storyline was probably very popular in the early 2000s. Yeah, yeah, whatever. <sighs> Let's get into the comparison, shall we? We obviously begin with the Teen Titans episode, since it's better. Debatable. As Starfire wakes up on the Tamaranian holiday Blordhog, as she goes to celebrate with Raven, Robin, Cyborg, and Beast Boy. But things go south as Beast Boy and Cyborg fight over a game, Robin plays his music really loud, and Raven gives her typical sarcastic remarks over the entire chaos. This breaks Star's heart, starts driving her crazy, makes her drop the necklace, and as the tension keeps building and building, she screams to get everybody to stop fighting. I will say, the setup is quite entertaining, and you really feel like you're on Star's level throughout all the madness. Right? The rising volume of it all mixed with the animation cutaways and little stylistic flares they added just screams anime to me. Weeb. Oh come on, the tiny character models all circling around Star's head as she goes crazy is an amazingly creative move in my opinion. I actually agree with all that. As an intro, this episode shines in getting us to relate to Star on a level of sympathy and watch her justifiably get mad at her friends for ignoring her. The scene ends with the Titans apologizing and telling Star that they'll never drift apart and get a call to go on a mission. Ooh, foreshadowing. Now that the setup for the episode is done, let's get to the TMNT. Ooh, hold up there, buddy. Are you trying to ignore the amazing theme song? Ugh, fine. The theme song is admittedly pretty incredible. I will say the TMNT theme is slightly more catchy and memorable, but that's totally up for debate. Damn right it is. The melody, the instrumentals, the awesome graphics, you just can't beat this show's theme song. Alright, fine. The theme song is awesome. Moving on. We got a new time-traveling villain named Warp, trying to steal an important clock artifact until the Titans show up to stop him. The clock of eternity. Valuable in the past, priceless in the future. <laughs> but for the present, You'll keep your filthy hands off it. Hold on there just a second. Go back. Yep, Alex Sato. Same guy who worked on Ben 10 and Generator X. Just checking. Carry on. Yeah, anyway, Warp fights them pretty well, defeating most of them easily until he takes the Clock of Eternity, as he calls it, opens a time portal and tries to escape. But Starfire, who is now pissed off and doesn't want to let him get away, lunges right at him and they both go into the portal together. And it closes before any of the other Titans can jump in. Yep, she quite literally pushes herself in the portal from her own anger, and we see clocks passing behind Star and Warp, signifying the time is passing very quickly. Star grabs Warp's chest device thing, honestly, where's Pepper Pods when you need her? Boy, are you saying- And Warp gets warped off into the time tunnel, and so does Star, getting transported into an alternate world where it's snowing, and the Titan Tower is also destroyed. Yep, 
this world is also very sad. Yeah, yeah, we'll get to this episode a little bit later. Now that the setup and transport scene for this episode is done, let's move on to the TMNT episode. Same as it never was, starts off with a very chilling alternate dimension where the Shredder has totalitarian dictator control over the Earth, and everyone is a servant to the Shredder. We hear a very scary narration from Karai, telling everyone that freedom is something they will never ever have, and that they're all servants of the Shredder. This was some messed up crap for a kid's show, man. Yeah, this was pretty dark. It's like if Kim Jong-un wore a cheese grater mask. But seriously though, this intro was pretty epic. While being a lot shorter than the Teen Titans intro and not including any of our main characters here, it's the perfect foreshadowing into the world that we'll be experiencing for the next 22 minutes. Absolutely, the pathetic fallacy of the rain falling on these hopeless people and this desolate universe just adds even more goosebumps to this scene. Is that it? Hold on, you brought up the theme songs. This theme song is freaking incredible, dude. Seriously, can you even listen to this and not love the crap out of it? Probably. Seriously though, I've touched on every TMNT theme song in a previous video, but for right now, I hope you know the setup intro scene has yours beat by a long shot. Alright, enough shameless self-promotion, let's move on already. Yeah, so this episode was the most popular one from the mini-arc in the third season involving Draco and the Damio Sun, sending each turtle and splinter to an alternate world where they focus on that turtle for the episode. This episode was Donatello's episode, which similarly coincides to how How Long Is Forever focuses on Starfire. The episode basically starts with Donnie talking to April on the computer as an earthquake shakes the lair, and the same repetitive intro from the other episodes as Damio san and Draco freeze everyone and debate who to torture first. And because this is Don's episode, Donnie gets transported to another dimension, where the lair is completely trashed, and the world is a totalitarian nightmare. Back to Starfire, this new segment is the part of both episodes where the protagonist meets back with their friends in this new universe they're in. Starfire goes into the trash Titan's tower as this beautiful piano instrumental plays over her reaction. The raw emotion as she slowly walks in is priceless, and the moment Cyborg realizes it's her again is absolutely beautiful. I mean, after all that setup, this episode is 9 minutes into a 21 minute episode. The TMNT episode needed half that time in just about 4 minutes, so who really wins? The one who dedicates more time to the second and third acts, which are more important, or just a setup to get the character into a new world? I'd say the latter, personally. An ending fight is nothing unless we know exactly where we are and how this world works. Another thing these episodes have in common is that neither the protagonist, Donnie and Star, age a day as they travel through time, which makes it even more contrasting to see the other characters in bruised and battered appearances. Very true. Cyborg explains to Star that the Titans are no more, and the world she remembers is long gone. No hope. Star is adamant that this can't be, and asks Cyborg for his help. Remember this. Why? Because the other episode does the exact same thing. Right. Cyborg says he can't leave a stationary spot in the Titan's Tower, but tells Star where to find the others. Star goes to Beast Boy, who works as a shape-shifting animal at an amusement park. He explains how he got his butt kicked as the solo hero, and this is all he can do at the moment. Star goes to Raven, locked in a white room, not believing it's really Star, thinking she's just a figment of her imagination. It's all really quite sad. Eventually, as Star is walking in the snow, Warp comes back and fights her. He is also aged in this world. At first, she doesn't give up the time regulator she took from him, but after he convinces her that her past is written in stone, she gives it to him until Nightwing shows up and kicks serious butt. Eh, Young Justice still did it better. Whatever. This has got to be the coolest part of this episode. You could actually be right on that one, but still not as cool as this. So, the turtle with the big brain finally doesn't have all the answers. That's right, we're back to the Superior episode as Donnie walks out of the battered and destroyed lair. Rip off. And gets surrounded by Shredder's armies. He nearly gives up until Mikey shows up and saves him. And Mikey does it while also having a missing arm. Yup, this has to be the coolest and most gutsy turtle show to ever come out. And this clocked over 5 million ratings from this madness. After they catch up, Mikey takes him to Master Splinter. So far, we don't know what happened to any of the other turtles, but the point that is reinforced over and over is that the Shredder is always watching, and the nightmare for the Turtles has finally come true. The Shredder has won, and he has the entire planet in the palm of his hand. And I gotta say, the music here is super chilling, and every time Karai's voice comes through with the Shredder bit, I get massive goosebumps because it is executed so well. Mikey takes Don through a forest, as Donnie almost warps away. <laughs> warps. But then he just comes back. This sort of hints at how he'll be poofed away at the end of the episode. Mikey explains how the team fell apart after Donnie left 30 years ago, and we see that Master Splinter is dead? Yeah, he sacrificed himself for them a few years after Dawn left and is now buried in this grave. Oh my god. That's right, this show had balls. So Mikey takes Donatello to their hideout where April is still alive, 
and Casey is revealed to also have died. We also see Hun and Stockman merge together into this weird concoction, now teaming up with the good guys, but obviously older and in a wheelchair. I gotta say, the redesigns of all the characters in both these shows is a highlight in my opinion. Seeing everyone with gray hair, battered or broken limbs, or even deceased, is a really cool insight as a fan of both these properties. Dawn asks April if she can get Ralph and Leo to meet him again, and we transition to the Shredder and Karai. Wasn't this the same show that had Shredder die and come back like 17 times just because Shredder was that menacing? Same one! And so far, we only see this Shredder, who I guess is Shrell 30 years in the future, in shadow form until the third act. He is informed by Karai that Donatello has been spotted, and Shredder orders her to kill him and bring his body to him. Okay, I got a question. It's just a minor thing, but I feel like if I don't ask, I'll regret it for a long time. <clears throat> Why is Karai's voice so damn annoying to listen to? Right? I guess me and you don't have too many differences after all. Anyway, we go to Leo and Raph, who meet up after a long time. Leo is now blind in both eyes, and Raph is blind in one. Both voice actors deliver unbelievable performances as they argue about saving Master Splinter from dying. Both of them yell at each other in what I can only describe as writing genius, until they both reunite after 30 years, after they see Donnie. What? Leo, Raph, we need to talk. Donnie? No way! Then he comes up with a plan to go against the Shredder. Yeah, and that's where the second act kind of ends with this one. While How Long Is Forever focuses 50% on the first act and 30% on the second, same as it never was that it gets almost 45% to the third act fight scene, which is all it really boils down to. So let's get back to How Long Is Forever as we jump into the third act. After reuniting with Nightwing, Star goes to his back cave or whatever it is, and Nightwing calls all the Titans with their communicators which he kept for a long time, just in case. Starfire and Nightwing meet Warp yet again at the same warehouse with the artifact, as they fight him. At first, Warp has the upper hand, until the other three titans all reunite in a really heartwarming scene They give some more meaning to this awesome team. Dude, that is so unfair. <laughs> okay, that is hilarious. Right before Warp is about to leave in another portal, Robin destroys his regulator and he changes back to a baby. Before the wormhole closes, Cyborg redirects it back to Star's time, and they say their goodbyes. Then when she comes back, she explains to her friends about how that future is the result if they drift apart. And the episode ends with the characters all learning their lessons and celebrating Blood Hog with Starfire, hoping to never have a future like that ever. The third act of the TMNT episode is something on a whole nother level though. Right after Donnie plans to attack Shredder, we cut to him attacking Shredder. Shredder. Zero time is wasted and the tunneler plows through Shredder's headquarters, and the turtles all hop out and start fighting Karai's legion bots. Dawn and April attack most of the bots, and Hun pleads to Shredder to take him back as his loyal servant, and Shredder just freaking steps on the poor guy. Honestly, I just feel nothing but sorrow for Stockman, especially after insane the membrane. <laughs> Mikey then hops out and gets surrounded by Karai bots, until there are too many, and he is killed right before our eyes. It's honestly so raw and just brutal that it would probably be enough to make this episode as incredible as it is. But no, Donnie goes full berserk on Shredder, but Shredder just grabs his mech suit and kicks him away. Truly pathetic. <laughs> Disgusting creature. Yeah, I will say, the stakes in this episode are much higher, the death count is obviously much higher, and the overall suspense is on a completely different level. While Warp destroying the Titans' timeline is terrible and all, the Shredder is a long-time villain spanning all seven seasons of this show. He's come back time and time again, and in this episode has complete dominance over the entire planet. So if this fails, everyone everywhere will die. Then we get a fight between Karai and Leo. Hey, I'm barely a TMNT fan, and even I know that this shtick is tired and annoying at this point. It absolutely is. Leo just never seems to grasp that Karai isn't on his side. From how she betrayed him in Exodus to a hundred other examples. At least here, he doesn't even give her a chance, but the fact that the writers ever thought these two had any semblance of chemistry is beyond me. Then she actually kills Leo? Yup, and as Raph angrily charges at her trying to get her back, she even manages to kill him. Leo! 
This is absolutely why Raph is my favorite turtle. This scene of completely raw, unfiltered emotional material was completely foreign to kids shows at the time. It proved that anything could be enjoyed by any age. And this scene in particular is enough to make a grown man cry. It's so genuine, so heartbreaking, so perfect in every way. It honestly deserves an Oscar. Then April blasts the ever-loving crap out of Karai. Why she didn't do that 37 seasons ago? I have no idea. It is honestly the most satisfying thing in this act so far. Shredder grabs hold of Donnie again, but before you can murder him as well, Donnie latches chains around his suit, activates the tunneler, and absolutely vaporizes the living crap out of this monster. And that's where this episode ends, with April thanking Donatello for his sacrifice and showing him that there's always hope, no matter what. Titans, where are our friends? The Titans are history, Star. Your friends aren't friends anymore. My poor brothers. This world, this future, it's a nightmare. Same as it never was and How Long Is Forever are two of the best episodes of both TMN 2003 and Teen Titans. They both follow protagonists as they go to a nightmarish reflection of their own worlds. Along the way, they reunite with old friends and are horrified of how scary it can all be. They both learn sacrifice, coming together, and friendship. How Long Is Forever is a great episode that tackles the moral of not drifting apart as friends in a very interesting format. And Same As It Never Was is a great episode that emotionally scars the viewer with death after death, showing us how damn raw it can be. Right, so which one's the better one? Honestly, I don't know. They both exhibit characteristics that are true to both of themselves, and the Teen Titans one did come out first, so I can't exactly label it a ripoff. What do you say is really the best episode? I'm saying the Same As It Never Was is obviously a better episode. What? Thank you so much for watching, everybody. Be sure to subscribe to both of us for more fun shenanigans, and tell us which episode you think tackled this plot better in the comments down below. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you beautiful ladies and jellyfish next time. Alone. So